Hey YouTube, hey YouTube. Today I am coming at you with a book review. Jay-Z Decoded. Yes, get it, get it. Mm. You know, this is this is a really good book. Um, I have so much more respect for Sean Carter, Jay-Z, as a person for this book. This should be required reading. And I'm not saying saying that just to be like, oh, you need to go out and get this. It is a very fast read. I do want to tell you that. But it is so, again, rich and textured and layered. You think this is just going to be an autobiography like, hey, I'm Sean Carter. I was born you know in New York this is how I got in the game no this is a love story to his biggest love in his life hip-hop writing rhymes you know he came at you he decodes the lyrics of a lot of his songs off of the various albums you know reasonable reasonable doubt you know the black album he decodes them he right the lyrics are in the book and then he tells you the thought process behind how he came to the lyrics and then there's always a story behind that you know at first when I heard about it I actually heard about it Oprah's favorite things and so I was kinda like it must be a really good book if she likes it because she's not a big hip-hop Jay-Z fan you know so I have gone through the book like Miss O and picked out some 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 of my favorite passages so just to help you get a better you know feel for the book this is feeling very Oprah-esque at the moment let me get you the page this is page 235 from part 4 come and get me he says, when I first started working on this book, I told my editor that I wanted to do three important things. The first thing was to make the case that hip-hop lyrics, not just my lyrics, but those of every great MC, are poetry, if you look at them closely enough. The second was I wanted the book to tell a little bit of the story of my generation, to show the context for the choices we made at a violent and chaotic crossroads in recent history. And the third piece was that I wanted the book to show how hip-hop created a way to take a very specific and powerful experience and turn it into a story that everyone in the world could feel and relate to. All of these threads come together at a pivotal moment for me, the moment when I fully cross from one life to another. This, that statement right here meant a lot to me because He's trying to show the reader that hip-hop is just more than the flashy stuff you see on television. This is like someone you've grown with. Like, oh, I'm saying like too much, but he shows you how he grew up with hip-hop. You know, from African, Africa Bambada, you know, um let's see Sugar Hill Gang and he incorporates so many other genres of music and he shows how to precisely use words to get the meaning you want to get like in a rap song you only have what about four to five minutes to capture the essence of what you want to say so you have to have particular words and they have to do more than what you are asking a word to do in a rap song is doing more than a word does in like a Victorian novel. They have 400 pages to get there. Rap song, you got 400, you got four minutes, what is it, 16 bars to get it done. So, I like how he, and he's very well versed. You know, you have this image of him and maybe a whole image of hip hop this man is quoting Elizabethan sonnets he's telling you the iambic pentameter like, you know 
the rhythm, the way, like the staccato beat that something has to come to make this kind of expression and to get the crowd going. I was like, get out of here, Jay-Z. You need to be teaching at Harvard. This is English. Um, another great lesson was when he said, talking about when Obama became president. He's basically talking, this is page 169 and 170. He's basically saying that he finally felt, you know, like an American um, when Obama became president. And I understand that. Um, I have felt like an American. I can count the times because usually I say, hey, me 4,000 me, I'm black. I don't think American, but when President Obama, you know, November 4th was elected president and then in January 2009, inauguration, as president, I felt like an American. Because I know a lot of people do the same thing I do. Puerto Rican, I'm Dominican, I'm Polish, I'm German, Italian. You say your ethnicity sometimes first and not your nationality first. Um, I've only felt that way maybe a th one other time was when I went and traveled to Europe and went to Spain. And of course when you get to Europe with your passport, you have to declare the, the nation. The pa your passport declares your nation. So there I was an American. I was so other. But I can understand his feeling like on November 4th, 2008, how American you felt like we did it. I did it. We fought for something and it came true. Like, yes. So, I mean, I could go on and on about this book. We're going to call him Brother Sean Carter because this is, this is a history lesson right here. You need to read it. It incorporates a lot of, I mean, it's like a lasagna. A good hearty lasagna you know like mm, textures layers I want you to read this this is required reading this is your homework um, I'm going to eventually buy it right now you know I'm getting it from the library which is why I had to hurry up and do this review because it took me two months to get this book from the library waiting list so big ups um, Please read this book. This is so rich. The brother knows what he's talking about. He knows how to write a rhyme. So with that being said, I'm out.